Welcome back. You're taking up to the tail end of the program right now, but uh, this is very important. It bears repeating where the drug regulator, a pharmacy and poisons board, PPB, is recalling a batch of Johnson & Johnson children's cough syrup. It announced on Thursday, a day after Nigeria recalled the same batch of medication under the Benelin pediatric brand. Nigeria's health regulator said laboratory tests on the syrup showed a high level of diethylene glycol, which has been linked to the deaths of dozens of children in Gambia, Uzbekistan, and Cameroon since 2022 in one of the world's worst waves of poisoning from oral medication. Pharmacy and Poison Sport said in a statement it had commenced investigations and advised that sales of certain batches of the product be halted and returned to suppliers. And here is the alert, public alert on Benelin Pediatrics, that is a 100 ml cough syrup batch. That is a batch number that uh, you need to take care of. That is 329304, uh, manufactured by Johnson & Johnson, uh, South Africa. And uh, it has been shown here, the product details is as follows. Right, name of a product, Benelin Pediatric 100 uh, milliliters uh, syrup, 329304, that is a batch number. And the date of the manufacture is May 2021. And also you need to look at the expi expiry date, which is April 2024. And if you have no studying idea what Benelin looks like, maybe it is in your shelf and you don't know what we're talking about, this is the picture. So this is Benelin. Uh, you might have bought it from the chemist, the pharmacy there, when your child was coughing. And if you have it in stock, just check the batch number and the expiry date as well. We're talking about retirement. Most of you are at home right now, twiddling your thumbs, Enjoying your pension, but also questions are being raised about the whole idea about retirement in the country. It has been a big debate also in Parliament. Should we now revise the age from 60 to 55? Because also the young ones who are below that particular age are hoping to be employed at the end of the day. And it seems also there is that disconnect of the expertise and the people who are taking over, looking at what government has uh, done right now. Many of the retirees are being recalled on contract basis uh, because there is uh, the gap of all the knowledge gap that has not been transferred. Knowledge transfer has not been happening. So how do we handle this? Many of the consummate politicians and experts in this country also this morning, they might be watching us, but they have world wisdom and intellectual uh, wherewithal and rigor uh, as far as many aspects of our development is concerned, but they're not tapped into. Should the country consider these brains? What do they do with them? Churchill Silva, we are to come back with you on that particular notion. So just as AU is having the Council of Elders, yes, should we also I, I be having a Council of Elders here, not just from the village level, but from the upper reaches of government as well, where Honorable Kipruta Rapkirwa, who has been a consummate Minister of Agriculture in this country uh, and in different capacities as well, we can tap from his wisdom, right? That's not just from coming to give us here on the show, but where it can be also appreciated uh, on another level as well. Exactly. I, I think at, uh, at the national level, we have done well to, or did well to come up with um, a retirement package for former presidents or uh, presidents that have served their full terms, including an office. And, and the idea of an office is to enable such individuals um, to use their experiences and uh, in statecraft and, and also, of course, connections across the world uh, to continue serving the country and, and the citizens of the world. Uh, and, and I'm glad that um, you know, that still holds. Of course, there was some other mischievous intention of, uh, you know, that retirement package. Um, at that point, there was fear that, you know, the question was, why are African heads of state reluctant to retire? And, and, and perhaps, you know, the fear of being, you know, abandoned into, you know, neglect, abject poverty, and so on. So there was that tendency to lure people who are reluctant to retire. Uh, into retirement uh, because they would continue uh, with some of those benefits until, you know, um, um, God decides that they, 
they, they leave this earth. Uh, but but and, and that has continued, and that's why there is this debate recently about whether to allocate you know some of the offices that used to be occupied by uh, our own former presidents who have since left us uh, to those that are still living, because we uh, at some point had uh, you know uh, former President Moi Kibaki and now Uhuru Kenyatta, but now the first two have since left us since the law came into force. If you look at Africa, I've had opportunity to work with the uh, former president uh, of South Africa, Thabo Mbeki, uh, at the e AU level. He uh, used to head an initiative called the High Level uh, Implementation Panel um, that used to help you know, uh, Sudan mm. and, and South Sudan mm. to navigate some of the outstanding issues as, as, as the South seceded. Uh, there were a lot of outstanding issues around boundaries, BA and so on and so forth. You just saw recently that uh, despite seceding uh, from the Khartoum, uh, South Sudan airspace was still under the control of uh, authorities in Khartoum. And, and it is now the South is acquiring the wherewithal and capacity to take charge of their own airspace. And so all those things uh, will be there. And, and I think um, having said that, um, we have also seen that uh, at, 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 in Kenya, for example, you know, former religious leaders who have since retired, Bishop Ogende is today chairing the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. Um, it, it's retired, yes, but uh, it has been called upon and tapped to provide his skills and experiences and, of course, the moral authority uh, to shepherd the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission and, and many others, um, the current chair of the National Cohesion and Integration Commission is, is, is a former, you know, uh, Dr. Kobia. Kobia, former mm. religious leader who is serving very well, you know, uh, bringing his experience to bear on some of those things. So I think at a national level, we need to come up with a, a policy paper blueprint that, uh, you know, seeks to set, uh, you know, the parameters around which uh, people who have such experience, be it in sports, you know, be it in, uh, you know, football. We have so many footballers as a country, uh, politicians. Of course, the tendency, and I'm sure, if uh, Mweshimiwa here got another chance, he, 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 might, he might want to, you know, uh, make a stab because um, <laughs> uh, we have just realized that he's earning as much as he would earn when he's in parliament. So he's better off in parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, accumulating is uh, demanding bit of it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so there should be a way in which, for example, now we have the crisis, the fertilizer crisis, and the current CS seems to not to know the difference between substandard and fake. Yeah, uh, its limitation in vocabulary <laughs> is costing this country. <laughs> you know, when we were in school, we used to look at the dictionary and see the, what there was something called synonyms and antonyms. antonyms and, yeah. and the minister seems not to know that the other word for substandard is fake. You yeah. know, when something is substandard, it's fake. It's not the genuine uh, and so on and so forth. So yes, and so the, the CS, exactly, yeah. we exactly. would want to, the, you know, uh, <laughs> to see the current CS, you know, consulting uh, with, and, and perhaps what we, sh we need to do in future is that when we appoint new ministers or cabinet secretaries, as we call them, uh, that we need uh, perhaps to uh, ask former ministers like uh, Mweshimiwa here um, to take them through um, their roles, mm -hmm. you know, for a year or so, and then, you know, let them, you know, steer the ship so that they can learn uh, uh, from those experiences. Because uh, the, 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 the crisis we have in the agricultural sector, mm -hmm. I think, would, would, would benefit a lot from his experiences as one of the foremost uh, ministers of agriculture that has served this country very well. Mm -hmm. and, and we have seen how, you know, across the board, you know, um, even more recently, um, former President uh, General Luseguno Basanjo stepping in to help us, you know, restore peace. Uh, and this was not the first time that uh, that was happening to this country. We saw in uh, 2007 when, you know, Kenya was on fire, we saw former President of Ghana, you know, Kufu and so on coming in and so on. Um, and, and so we need to f have a pool at every level of society, whether it's in ports, at every uh, uh, sector of human endeavor, you know, where people can tap, even in the civil society, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Part of the reason why, you know, the organization I led, uh, you know, 
um, perhaps collapses because um, civil society people are very good at uh, criticizing uh, government, uh, criticizing uh, elections. But when you ask civil society people themselves mm -hmm. to do an election, they engage in the many irregularities mm -hmm. similar to what we see in government and so on. So uh, I think uh, it is a good idea that we need to uh, pick up on and see how right. we move it forward. Talking of sports as well, uh, I can see you can remember for those uh, who are born with, in, with the dinosaurs, uh, J.J. Masiga, down the memory lane as is uh, being depicted here in the star as well. When you're talking about sports, I think these are some of the minds that mm -hmm. have never been tapped into. Mm -hmm. uh, they've gone into the oblivion. Uh, why football rugby legend avows moments on the greens and fairways. I think he's been given a good feature here in the star as well. This is what we're talking about retirement, mm -hmm. but we yeah. still have. So it's actually a uh, tournament, uh, a golf tournament. Oh, golf tournament. tournament. This was in honor of yeah. JJ Masiga. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Is this a way of, that was actually a way of appreciating mm. him. Yes, and but, you but see, it, this is a medical doctor, mm. yeah. a dentist. This He's a dentist, is a yeah. former lecturer. This is a former footballer. This is a former national team footballer. Uh, played for FC Leopards. Uh, this is a golfer, he a former rugby player. So really what you're saying is that you, we have talents that we need to keep on. Exactly. Uh, we, we don't need to hear yeah. about them when they die. Like yeah. they are in, it, in, it. in, uh, in Nandi County, yeah. uh, who lived in the US, I don't know, for how many years. Mm. Uh, only to return and of course, uh, of course he, he got to live for a while. But uh, most people and the current generation of athletes were perhaps hearing about him for the first time. Yet this is somebody who should have been brought back to help, you know, uh, you know, uh, mold uh, future athletes into even better athletes than they were. So dockets like, uh, you know, the sports docket. Why should we not consider people like uh, JJ Masiga, uh, who they have been, you know, a bulwark of stability when it comes to sports in this country, especially football. Uh, they have at least a sense, their passion to see some of the sporting activity mainstreamed, given that he's been a rugby player, a football uh, player with, I mean, with AFC. Uh, that should be something that we consider as well. Yeah? Yeah? Kiro, briefly. Well, I, I think it's useful that uh, we believe in our own history, uh, because increasingly Kenyans seem to hate the past. And at times when you remind them of our history, they think you are just being a cake or too old. Mm. While history is very important because uh, people just don't appear. They go through a certain struggle for them to make the names they have made, uh, like, of course, Dr. Masiga and others. But uh, we are very quick to dismiss people, and uh, we are very quick almost to say whatever happened in the past is no longer relevant today. But it is always important and uh, instructive to say whatever happened in the past informs the future. <laughs> All right, I wanted us to turn the crack a bit right now and also just talk about what uh, is happening in this particular sector. You've seen the minister there of uh, agriculture, and Gams really packed it, I mean, picked it very well uh, as far as the fertilizer is concerned. If you may just uh, look at that in the talk, what do you mean, Ati Fake? Didn't our grandparents use Vinyesi? Vyawanyama? Uh, this is a Punda fertilizer that has been discovered and, uh, and the, where they also, uh, the CS has been stoutly denying that they were fake, they were substandard. Are we still towing and throwing with this particular issue? Uh, his foot is in the mouth, as you can see, fake fertilizer. This is what has been there uh, with the recent pronouncement. Even he had to go to the Senate and they, the Senate had to prove for him that, see, kuna vinyesi. Is that, is that how far we should go, Dubai? That uh, you hold a public office. It is in public domain that there is a problem, and you are treating it casually to the extent of saying it was not fake, it was substandard. I like the way Gams has put it as a punda fertilizer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if anything that is below a standard is acceptable, no, no, no. I mean, we have to have a high sense of. Uh, consciousness and we have to have a responsibility. Unfortunately, we are having that whole area going. I miss the days of the bearded uh, sisters, even though we have one bearded sister here. Uh, <laughs> they, they stood for something. They were firebrands, they were 
uh, known for speaking out the things that nobody would say, the truth and so on. And during more his days when the, he was a totalitarian, having people saying things that were against the grain was in surface. Now we have a situation where somebody can come in public and lie and does not feel any guilt and get away and still go and earn from our hard and uh, taxes. No, no, no. There should be something that if you fail, you are the first one who then says, sorry guys, I've let you down. He's now telling us about that he has been, uh, you know, he now wants to go and inspect uh, the, the fertilizer that has just arrived from in Mombasa. What capacity does he have to inspect? Why does he need leave that work to the, the right uh, organ? So that he, say, he says, I've asked for tests, they have been done, and the tests show this. Don't come and start talking things that you cannot uh, back up. You have no support for, you have no evidence to support that. But again, I say this is the level at which you have reached. Those are the kind of cabinet secretaries we have. They don't care. They don't uh, have the answer to no moral uh, calling and they can lie in public. So we had the uh, Honorable Kipruta mm -hmm. Kirwa, you were in this docket. What would you have done? In such a crisis, what will be the, fa the wisest fashion of, you know, responding to this crisis? Uh, first of all, before you respond, you must exhaust the system to know exactly what, uh, what is bedeviling that particular uh, issue. Uh, I would have expected him to get a brief from even uh, those who have tested from DCI and, and all the agencies so that when he comes out, he tells us exactly what has happened and what he's doing about that. But you see, from the National Assembly, he was making a different statement. When he went to the Senate, he was almost contradicting the position he had said at the National Assembly. I, I don't have a problem with him because I think his English is actually one thing. Uh, number two, when he was being cross-examined by the, by the National Assembly Committee, led by the Speaker, he said he has 35 cases. So to add another case to the 35 is not a problem to him, because he had court cases amounting to 35. So when, this when is he was the, being vetted? When he was being vetted. Mm -hmm. So I, I think he's used to that kind of scandal, and whoever put him there um, knew that uh, this is uh, the person who can do the things that are not uh, supposed to be done. Because you cannot say the fertilizer is not fake while it has been proven, some of it is torn, some of it is, uh, is waste from uh, donkeys and other, uh, and other animals. Because, yes, we can use uh, cow dung or, or, or cow manure or even the donkey manure, but it must be labeled as such. But they were labeling as fertilizer, inorganic fertilizer. It was not organic fertilizer. And if it is inorganic fertilizer, it should be what the label is. But what worries me, Dibal, about our country now is that how many other things are we consuming that are not genuine? Uh, are, are we not uh, destroying the lives of our people? Remember the oil, uh, edible oil that was said to be poisonous? Remember the sugar that was said laced with poison? and in many other products that possibly are getting to the market and uh, we are consuming without the knowledge because they are labeled to be uh, fit for human consumption. That is my main worry. And him should have actually resigned because you cannot say all these things ends up on National Cereals and Produce Board and you blame caps because how come that your stores received because when you take, even you are amazed today, to National and Serious Board at Mosbridge, Kitale, or Wasingishu, there will be an indication who are supplied that you have brought 200 bags of maize and your name and your ID. So how come that uh, most of these fertilizer, including soil from Kariandusi, ended up in the stores of National Serious and Produce Board? The minister should be able to tell us the truth about what is happening in the ministry. So the likelihood and of it worries me even, you see now there will be acaricides getting to the farmers, mm -hmm. there will be herbicides getting to the farmers, pesticides getting, getting to the farmers. How, how do we know whether these are genuine products? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I know we've talked a good game about this uh, fertilizer issue. We don't know how to slice the cow anymore. But the question of also compensation comes to bear. Uh, the government should be responsible to compensate these farmers. How will they track back? Uh, you, you know, you know, the people have a problem with, uh, and, and we need to ask questions that government must answer. That you know, when you say government will compensate, mm -hmm. it's your money, it is my money, it is your taxes and mine. Mm -hmm. For incompetence of certain people <coughs> that we have already seen on national television, I, I watched the, the CS uh, yesterday night on one of the national televisions. And he continued with the same contradictions that uh, have persisted ever since this matter began in February. And it raises very, very fundamental issues, both at the ministerial level or government level, and even at the National Serious and Produce Board. Because my understanding is that, first and foremost, we have had two major donations of fertilizers. One batch from Russia, and more recently from Algeria. And they have been selling this. Morocco. 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 Uh, they have been selling this at a price that I think was still too high. And uh, they took it too far and discovered that they can make more money. Of course, we have never been told what becomes of the monies generated from the sale of donated fertilizer from either Russia or Morocco. Um, but in my understanding of public uh, you know, procurement and asset disposal, regulations is that um, when you want to procure you invite people to express interest and I'm assuming that the National Cereals and Produce Board has a list of pre-qualified suppliers mm. uh, over and above the donated fertilizer that has been the commodity in trade um, so, so when, when it, it turns out that an individual uh, paid a visit uh, to the headquarters of uh, the National Cereals and Produce Board and was given the green light in a very casual way uh, to bring, you know, staff that whose standards had not been ascertained, then that, in my view, is a red flag. Secondly... Reminded of Kemsa. Uh, yeah. I was passing around. Exactly, the... you know. Anybody who was around Kemsa and passed by to inquire was told, bring, bring, bring. You're sucked by os osmosis. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, <coughs> any place where there is production or you, you, res you, you procure things that have been manufactured, there is always a person in charge of quality control. So I'm imagining that at the National Serious Board, there is somebody in charge of quality control mm -hmm. to ensure yeah. that if this fertilizer, because when it is brought like we got it from Russia or Morocco, it's in a form that cannot be used immediately. It has to be mixed, to be made, to be made suitable for different soil types and regions and crops. That's my imagination. Now, it will be upon, and we have seen it even on national television, people testing tea or wine. You know, they are, they are wine testers and coffee testers and tea testers. That is quality assurance. So you test, and there are people with that speciality who are gifted with the tongue to test which tea or coffee is which quality. Now, it seems that at the National Serious Board, there is no such people to ensure that you know, quality is maintained. Lastly, and still about the National Serious Board, when you receive a product, you want to inspect it against the specifications that you issued as, as, as to what, you, you must, what is brought must meet. And it seems that there is no inspection. Uh, there is an open door policy at the National Serious Board. And what we are seeing the minister is doing here is exactly what the CS for Interior did with the Shakahola massacre. He is all over the place covering for everybody else. And that, in my view, is where corruption stinks. When you see something, when you see a CS all over the place, uh, like the CS for Interior did, uh, whenever he appeared before the Senate, he say, no, 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 I'll represent the police officers. That tells you that you know, there are big people behind whatever has happened, and the CS is there to make sure that he does the proper cover-up. In my view, uh, the CS, and I agree with the, the, the Honorable Kirwa, that 
it is time as civil society, as Kenyans, we called on the CS for Agriculture, Medical Inturi, to quit because he has failed this country. In South Africa, as we speak, the Speaker of their Parliament has quit on mere allegations. Mm. Mere allegations. For fraud, yeah. Yes. In our own Parliament, we have witnessed people being vetted for ambassadorial appointments. And they are dismissing, you know, claims of impropriety as mere allegations. And you can be sure that they'll get away with it. We want to say that as civil society, if Parliament, the Committee of Parliament proceeds to clear those, some of those people around whom, you know, the EACC has raised concerns uh, for ambassador appointment, we will contest it in court and ensure that they are stopped from proceeding to those positions. And we are saying that the back stops with the president. The president told us that subsidizing uh, consumption was riddled with corruption. We now know that subsidizing production mm -hmm is riddled even with more corruption. <laughs> and so it stinks as it used to stink, if at all it was. And we are therefore calling on the president that rather than being held hostage, because I'm sure our president is being held hostage because of political considerations, the fear of losing votes uh, in areas where some of these you know, um, non-performing ministers come from. The president told us during the campaign that his campaign was issue-based. He therefore needs not to be held hostage by ethnic considerations or political losses that he may incur. And we call upon him, should Medical Inturi not resign, we call on President William Samuel Ruto to fire the minister immediately because this, in our view, was the president's, you know, a silver bullet <laughs> for food security. And he's watching as his pet subject is undermined by incompetence, by corruption, under the guise of, you know, uh, you know, uh, terminologies of, think, of whether something is fake fire, or, or substandard. You think if you wanted to fire him, he needs to listen to you. <laughs> Should I have fired him by now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end up on that uh, with uh, Horbo oh, okay. Kindiki as well. Thank you, Debar. I, I think... Those professors um, are not honorable. <laughs> not honorable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want that you know. <laughs> the honorable is the one I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> challenged to quit. <laughs> I'm busy now, honorable Kiro is so quick off the mark it's to make sure he clarifies. Yeah, he clarifies <laughs> so that you don't confuse the public. Um, um, thank you. I, I think the, the, the whole issue here is that... Um, you know, when we were in primary, we read a story, we used to read a story of, um, a story followed and then he was saying who will build the cut and uh, the, the, who, who will be the first person to do this. You talk of the minister being sacked, you know, but there, but there must be history and uh, history cannot be ignored. But uh, what I'm trying to say is that um, it's unlikely that the Ntore will be sacked it's unlikely that he's going to resign because we have seen this country where people in high positions, not only the cabinet ministers but, um, or secretaries, but uh, even in other positions, they get away with so many things. And Kenyans have accepted. It's, the, whole, the whole issue of uh, the Nturi now is coming because it's uh, fresh in the minds of Kenyans. But I'm telling you, uh, but after um, two or three months, that, that will be forgotten and another story will come. And I like your analogy that you must create a scandal in this country to become famous or to become whatever you want to be. Just create a scandal. In the morning, very early, when we started this show, we were talking of uh, uh, Chiloba, and you will get a job anyway, uh, despite of the contestations, uh, contestations that are there, because he, he, he qualifies. Then you, you talk of he has a lot of money, he has this, he has this, but nothing to prove. Um, that that does belong to him. So why should I not get a job? I'm not trying to say that uh, Dintori is doing well, but I think we are saying that um, what the minister is but he's doing is well. The, he's doing well. <laughs> well, according <laughs> to you, but I'm saying... And, and his, and his employer. <laughs> and his boss. <laughs> yes, okay, but... Uh, well, mm. I'm trying to explain myself that I'm not... He is not doing very well. Maybe his employer thinks so yourself. Mm. But I think uh, he lacks the moral authority as a minister or a cabinet secretary. You'll be the last person.
to comment such kind of contradicting statement saying this and this because the whole nation is looking at you even if you know the truth of the matter and you don't want to tell people don't try to convince uh, to confuse the public you, you know when you go to parliament you say something um, something different from what you said when you are maybe being vetted uh, even uh, maybe next time when you will be on TV interview me say something different because when you're not talk talking the truth you, you, are, you are expecting to contradict make contradictory statements and I think as a, a cabinet secretary is the CEO of the ministry from him nowhere else we can go unless we go to the president mm. because he's appointee of the president so he cannot make statement like any other junior uh, member of staff in the ministry mm -hmm. so if I were him I would have let even people in charge of procurement to make those pronouncements and he can make some corrections somewhere but morally if you are a cabinet secretary and you make that statement it has gone to the public not only to your employer but even those people who are opposing you know you are you know you know you are working relations and whatever with the members of the public you are just exposing yourself so much, and it doesn't even add anything. So uh, not too much on him, but to ask that he can toe down and let the people who are concerned maybe speak for themselves. I would have liked even the, the CEO Kemza, um, uh, Keps to protect his docket and say really what happened at Keps. Or even at the, the, the serious board. Thank you. They, they also say something about it. Thank you. But before you stop me, I think they also lack knowledge. Because if you have no knowledge of the ministry, you will also be picking things that are not connected. And I think that is uh, something. And finally, they should, uh, the minister should also tell Kenyans where he is leading us to. Because like, uh, this has been in the public domain about the fake fertilizer. And then you start making a joke and say it's substandard. Mm -hmm. Whether fake, substandard, use another name, the fertilizer is not acceptable to the farmers and is ruin, ruining our agriculture sector. So it's not very good for, for all of us and even for him myself as a cabinet secretary. All right. Uh, I just want us uh, also to gravitate now to other issues, especially with the party politics. And I need to... I know Horobo Kirwa, if you may just have that cartoon back, you were once a member of uh, that particular uh, party, right? That is ANC, as we can see it here. Let me just have it back. I need King Solomon's mm -hmm. wisdom to handle this. And by the way, uh, right? Uh, you wanted to say he needs to tell us how many parties, how many parties he has for been in. Yeah, for, yeah. for the twenty good years, for the twenty years he was been, in Kano. He's right? been in every party. <laughs> 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 you were once a close ally of uh, ANC. You, you know, with BP, he uh, 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 he's one, he's one of, of the fertilizers party. DAPK. All right, Horbo Kirwa, yeah. we, we've had the but, folding of ANC and we've seen also the former leader of ANC, Msalem Madavadi, is totally denying that he's unfollowable. But we know uh, that uh, UDA is folding a party, a constituents party, and there's a quest for it to become a super mega party. Is that a sentiment on the ground you once in UDA uh, or in the upper reaches of that particular party? Would yes. you tell us what is happening? Yes, I was uh, a deputy party leader of ANC. And I was also deputy chair of UDA. Of UDA. Mm -hmm. so, so I know sufficiently the two parties. And of course, originally I was a member. Mm -hmm. yeah. member. Life member. Life member. You still have your. I have my life member certificate. He's still, he's he's a souvenir. Membership is still belonging to other parties. <laughs> 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 he's still living. <laughs> but but uh, I, I don't fault the, the, the wisdom of the president. Uh, wanting to, to build a strong political entity. I, I think that is the way we should go as, as Kenya. We build strong political entities, but we should l allow natural organic processes to take place. But isn't that a, a threat to multi-party democracy? You know, no, no, no. We should allow them to naturally uh, weave themselves into one or two or three entities that are strong and uh, nationally accepted across the board. I say so because I strongly believe that the only way we can stem this issue of uh, tribalism is possibly build strong entities that cut across communities. Because in Tanzania and in South Africa, 
the two political parties, that is uh, CCM and uh, ANC respectively, they have been able to create some kind of national discourse that when a president is wanting for one reason or the other, is removed and when they are choosing leaders, they are chosen from, uh, part, from the party regardless of the community it comes from. Uh, remember, it is only the late President Magufuli who comes from, uh, who, who came from a huge community. Otherwise, starting with Nyerere, the Sanaki people are just uh, uh, a few hundreds. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the late Mkapa comes from uh, the, 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 a small community. Kikwete, the, 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 the Makweres are also a small community. Uh, the current president and even the late president um, uh, Ali Hassan Mwinyi. So in a way, what am I trying to say? It is not like Kenya where for you to be a serious contender for presidency, you must come from a huge community. We need to improve that. But as you do that, you should not emasculate or swallow other political entities. That is where I fault the president. Because why fault these parties? Why don't you build a political entity uh, around your own party? Let others disappear out of natural attrition processes uh, or survive because of their strength of survival. And, uh, and, and, and we build national institutions. Uh, that I, I really advocate and, and I would have wished to do more research in Tanzania and in South Africa to understand and perhaps also in Botswana although they use the chief system uh, in terms of building political consensus nationally, but still there are some plans of political parties' existence in Botswana, apart from Tanzania and South Africa. All right. Should we be taking also what is happening within ANC with the, with the Tawe movement? Uh, as you can see it... Uh Martin Olo, mm -hmm. that is the true cartoon there. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, there has yeah. been this rift uh, that has been happening so far uh, in uh, the Western region uh, with the Tawe movement. And uh, we can see also ANC is being called to, uh, to, to fold up. He comes now to startly deny that uh, we, we are intact, we're here to stay. So what is happening, especially with the region and even the folding up of this particular, what, what are some, some of the dynamics that maybe may bear you see to the that, politics of the Western region in light of what is happening. Do you see the guy who is on the other side with his foot almost uh, kicking the box? Yes. That's the, the <laughs> <laughs> That is the real thing. You know, what I like this about... This person uh, who's being kicked into uh, that particular uh, box. What I like about uh, <laughs> what we are seeing is that there's somebody who is uh, seated somewhere high up who is always uh, thinking about politics and finding ways. Like the Tawai movement is a very good occurrence in the political scene because it is a movement meant to destabilize uh, Musali and destabilize uh, Wetangula at the same time. That allows for discussions around UDA and around other things and around folding up. So the Tawai movement is very critical in that uh, uh, conversation. And um, of course, the moment Rotangola becomes uncomfortable at home, begins to go and meet MCS, you know that now something <laughs> is happening. The moment Musalia begins to say, I'm folding up, and then he says, no, I didn't say I'm folding up, then you know that there is some heat that is really coming through. Uh, at the end of it, uh, I like what Mashimo Akira is saying, that there is need for one movement, but there is also a lesson that we should have learned from the Kanu script. Kanu script, Kanu, existed to swallow every space that there was politically including one time they've swallowed ndp with the tinga uh, you know engine still on and then the thing kept on rattling even when it was still inside <laughs> and it cost kanu at that time this business of swallowing things sometimes has its own problems uh uda is going to suffer the kanu uh, pain at some point this appetite for wanting to swallow anything that is on its or is around or is useful for example, we've seen with impunity an appointment of seating uh, public servants into UDA structures. Now, that is impunity that can only be rivaled back to Kanu, because for Kanu, uh, Kanu was uh, the party and Kanu was the government. So that kind of approach it begins to tell us that we are preparing ourselves for some uh, metamorphosis or for some, you know, 
evolution at some point within this UDA movement. Uh, remember that Kanu was swallowing anything that was in the way, including Maendeleo and Awake, it said Kanu Maendeleo and Awake, you know, <laughs> anything that was successful became part of Kanu. And that is the way I see it. Even trade at movements. At some point, Kotu. Uh, some tra yeah, even trade movements. Even mm -hmm. right now, Atwoli is uh, inside uh, UDA because he is Kotoing in a way that is making the UDM and the, 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 the uh, labor movement look subservient to political uh, agenda. So this is within the script. And of course, they are trying to borrow from the Chinese uh, model. And I think they are getting a lot of advice there. So that the strong man uh, at the head of the Politburo makes decisions about what happens uh, in terms of party. But there's no difference between what's happening in UDA and what's happening in ODM. Because both of these parties cannot, can hardly hold elections of any kind. So you've heard now they are saying consensus, consensus. So these noises are just meant to shift things so that one then gets their, their, their place on the table. You know, if I want to disrupt the order of things on this table, all I need is to bang it a bit and make some noise and cowards like Churchill will take off and then somehow you begin to... Uh, that's not, you that's not, the light not mention Churchill <laughs> and cowardice. <laughs> 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 this, this, this is a man uh, that has been in the Nya house. The uh, Nya uh, 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 chamber like torches. To up, so <laughs> the point is that there's a disruption happening mm -hmm. uh, and the intentions are obvious so that then they can allow a conversation. Uh, for mergers and so on. Even uh, Moshmo was talking about tribalism. I am not sure that uh, we get away with it if we go into the big parties. We'll still go there with our tribes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the worry again. Mm -hmm. Because some people are saying, but who are these guys? What are they coming with? So even as we discuss on this merger, the tribe still holds sway. And people will be saying, but Sisi Trukopatia Kura, we gave you the vote, so why are you, uh, what are you giving us? So this merger thing will be mad again with that color. But, but right. that situation in the bar is not going to change in the near future because um, you know Kano has been uh, Moshimua here will tell you it, it, it was uh, the longest serving party a uh, ruling party uh, even now it's existing also it's a weak party really it's not as strong as it was before but this situation is not going to change simply because um, parties belong to individuals and um, we have not reached that level that parties belong to members so if I form a party, if I form a party, it's, it's, it becomes like a personal, it's my property. Mm -hmm. Now ANC has no option than to join the UDA, and the UDA will be the strong party, just like Jubilee in the previous regime. For the next 10 years, this is the party, the ruling party. So ask me how they are going to 2027, because they are going to get all these mergers of the small parties, and possibly part of uh, ODM, mm -hmm. because ODM now is uh, being very weak. All simply right. because the, their leader is also weak, has been weakened because of AU, a, AU appointment. He is very, very busy there. Until the other day, I think yesterday, he talked about uh, the doctor's strike. And I think the bar, we are almost ending this uh, show yes. without commenting on the doctors. I think this is a very serious problem in this country, and our people are really dying. I hope somebody somewhere will address this issue so that one that can, can, can really get, uh, get sorted out. But ANC has no option, and any other party just join UDA, become a very strong party for the next 10 years. So after 10 years, then you think for another party. And our tribes are not going very soon, because all these parties are also belong to certain tribes. And that's they, they, bring, they bring on the table. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's something very, very serious. By the way, as a nation, we really need to address it, because that one should, you know, be checked. All right. I, you, I want him to comment on comments. ANC. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, you know when you talk of ANC, you, 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 you are confusing the public because most people think about the ANC in South Africa. I think it's no, Kiro no, no, who was they, for they, uh, they, <laughs> they do not know that there is... A not ANC. many Kenyans okay. remember that there is such a party in this okay. country. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> what, what, what is it that the ANC has done? <laughs> who, who, who remembers? <laughs> no, I, I, should, I, I should not have provoked him now that I call him something. Now you see coming out see what, yeah, with, the, with the guns blazing. Yeah, we see where you're coming from. I can see. Yeah, can see yeah. In that uh, box where, you know, yes, some no. party leaders are being stepped on yeah. and forced into the box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, up there I think is uh, the Secretary General, the current, sec the appointed Secretary General of UDA. Yeah. 
This is the guy, uh, Honorable Malala, who delivered Mudavadi to UDA. You remember the earthquake that never was? Yes. At, no, at, at that we are at, waiting for another earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> at the bombers of Kenya. Yeah. You remember even in this county, Nairobi City County, the current governor, uh, Sakaja, was a ANC member. Mm. And he's told, you want to run in Nairobi, you can only run on UDA. Mm. And it works. Mm. The Honor of Musalia Mudavadi's own MP back at home, he was elected on a UDA ticket. Mm. Mm. So, so where is this ANC that you people are talking about? Where is it? It's the individual. <laughs> Mudavadi. <laughs> Mudavadi. Mudavadi is not elected. <laughs> <laughs> Mudavadi talked about an earthquake that never happened. It was not even a tremor. Ah. Uh, there was not even a tremor. But uh, the tectonic since shifts. Since the elections, the the tectonic since the elections, place. is there any single activity or rally? Nothing. As Mudavadi himself pronounced yeah. ANC. That's Have we seen him on national television? Yeah. No. Mudavadi is not a party guy. He has no history yeah. of mm. building parties. And so we are forcing it on him. He is just chosen the easier option of uh, you know, joining you know, okay. other parties that have better leaders, that are more aggressive. Because we would have seen him you know, protect his staff. But mm. when you, are, you find yourself in a situation where even your own MP and a couple of MCS in his backyard who are elected, on other parties other than his own party. That ideally in an ethnicized society like ours should be Mudavadi's stronghold. Where is the Honorable Mudavadi's stronghold? And that's why I said, you know, when we talk about ANC, we need to clarify that we are not talking about the ANC of South Africa. There is supposed to be a party called the ANC in this country that chose <laughs> to go dormant. Immediately the earthquake happened. I think it was consumed by the earthquake itself. We were told he was going to run for presidency. Did it ever happen? Yeah. I mean, that was the scandal. You don't tell people and create a scene as if you are going to be one of the most formidable presidential candidates and you don't even run for an MCA in the long run. Not even a running mate in the long run. So I think the president is alive to the fact that he may have lost the support he had in Mount Kenya region, in central Kenya, and he's trying to build, you know. And, and so one way of building is to coerce people. Uh, the other day I was, uh, after Easter, um, after burying a friend who uh, was my secretary general during, uh, in the students' government, uh, I, I took a trip to Chuele. And, and I encountered uh, the official vehicle with a flag in tow of the Speaker of the National Assembly towards Chuele, and he was a lone driver. And I said, in his own backyard, not even being mobbed by, you know, pedestrians and passers-by, and they could see the flag, speak of National Assembly. I said, something is, 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 is happening cooking. here. Something is cooking here. It is unheard of for a leader of that magnitude who has made this country kind of believe that, you know, after the deep president and deputy is the third in command in the case of any eventuality, to have been driving lonely, you know, on a stretch from Chuele towards Bungoma town, it's, it's, there's something amiss. Mm. And the politics are spread to Sanzoya. And so the fight you see about Tawe and so on between, uh, you know, the, 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 the Sanzoya governor, uh, Natembea, actually, uh, Natembea literally, is uh, traversing the region and, you know, carving a niche for himself as a political force. And within the next uh, couple of months, we might be seeing realignments. Thank you. Uh, that we never thought of before. Mm -hmm. Albu Kirwa, uh, your closing remarks? My music is up. Yeah, my closing remarks is that uh, this issue of compensation to farmers, are we compensating for buying fake fertilizer or are we anticipating the production that would have accrued had the fertilizer been right? That should be the issue the government should be thinking about. Because for every fake bag of fertilizer, you lose 20 bags of maize. Mm. So if 800,000 bags of fertilizer were sold and while they were fake, we have lost 10 million bags of maize. Mm -hmm. 
That should be the level of compensation. Thank you. Farmers. Thank you. Level of compensation. Uh, Kendiki? Yeah, the issue of fertilizer is um, very sensitive in our, in our community because farmers are now uh, in the planting system. So I think uh, this situation should be arrested as soon as possible. All right. Horrible. Not on doctor. No, 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 doctor. Doctor Martin, hello. Doctor hello. Infecting us. The bell. I think we we have reached a stage in the country in which we might want to call up a crisis meeting. Yeah. Uh, to rethink about ourselves because I think that all the promises that were given by Kenya Kwanza have flopped. All the understanding of what the problem was in this country before they came in has since. Uh, been proved, uh, uh, you know, uh, untrue. So now that we have a crisis of doctors, we have a crisis of uh, fake uh, fertilizer, soon we'll have a crisis of productivity. We might want to call up a crisis meeting to have a conversation with us, if we want to be honest. Otherwise, we can continue in our hypocrisy uh, to our own detriment. All right, crisis. thank you. Churchill, your closing remarks? My closing remarks is that um, we needed to call ourselves to order. Um, the president needs to uh, be a little more sensitive to uh, public opinion. Um, I'm sure as head of state he has access to information and he must be informed that he has lost a considerable chunk of even those who believed in his Ken Kenya Kwanzaa messaging. It has turned out that it is no longer Kenya Kwanzaa, but some Kenyans Kwanzaa. If the employment we saw at uh, Kenya Revenue Authority is anything to go by, if the inequalities that we continue to see is anything to go by, we need it to be a country that values merit, that values suitability, and that believes in the values of integrity and ethics that we put for ourselves in Chapter 6 of the Constitution. Fantastic. I think uh, Taifa Leo also surmises well, wasikize watu wako, this is what the clergy are calling for, viongozi hao, wakanisa kubwa zaidi nchini, wamtaka rais, kutambua uhalisia, wahali ngumu, inayo kumba raya. That is the prayers of uh, the clergy as well. We hope that uh, we can get out of this morass that we are in, as far as the health crisis is concerned. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I really appreciate all of the treats having you on Friday on this forum to just give perspective on some of the pertinent issues in this country. And you've, you've spoken quite movingly on a raft of issues. I want to thank you for coming through as well. All right, thank you for your valid company as well. You've been watching Ongozi today. And uh, his diary is up next. Good. Always nice having you.